Hey yo prodigies, as many of you know the Meatly Games has released remaster trailers for Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 of Bendy and the Ink Machine. What that basically means is they're both going to get really big updates when Chapter 4 drops, and a lot of you have been asking me to cover these in a quick video, so I'm going to do this right now and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so literally in the middle of editing this video, the Meatly dropped a remaster trailer for Chapter 3 as well, so expect to see that in this video too. The way this video is going to work is I'm going to watch the trailer with you and step by step I'm going to add my little input on what I see on the screen, just my first impressions, my reactions to what I'm seeing and hopefully uh, a little bit of a prediction for what might be coming in chapter 4. There will probably be a lot of stopping and starting in this video so if you haven't seen this then I'll put links into the description or in the comment section to both of these videos that we're about to watch so you can watch them in full first. Let's start off with the chapter 1 remaster trailer. So, chapter one, like you've never seen before. Dun dun. That classic, the classic chapter one music, new visual upgrades. Hey, they, they made these, um, so this is the first thing I noticed, probably the first thing everyone noticed. They changed the gear looking 3D model things to actual uh, film reels, which is really cool. So it kind of fits the theme a little bit better and we can see that it's actually called Joey Drew Studios. Not silly vision, as a lot of people said before. That happened a little bit fast, so I'm going to go back there. I'm pretty sure this ink machine sign was updated. It looks a lot cleaner. It's got a lightning bolt symbol. There's a lightning bolt symbol above the switch. Now this part here is really interesting. It's got a, a schedule. Yes, they call it the ink output schedule. Now this has huge numbers on it, like 19, 103 gallons, 24 gallons, 103, 423 gallons. Are you serious? Why do we need this much ink? This is probably why Wally Frank said in his recording, why do we need this much ink anyway? And we can see at the bottom, it's signed off by TC, who is probably Thomas Connor, which means we will probably get more audio recordings from Thomas Connor, which is always going to be exciting to understand a little bit more from another character's perspective on what's going on in the story. It would be interesting if we actually see Thomas Connor as an ink worker in chapter four. We can also see some warning signs here. One says danger, keep out, and one says watch your step on the ink pipe. So there was really bad occupational health and safety going on here, which probably didn't even exist back then anyway. But what's there to be worried about behind that wall? I can see a little doorway there, so will we be able to come in this area, jump over the pipe, and go into that room and find out? I wonder. If anything, it's probably a portion of the ink machine. You can see a bendy cutout on the left. Uh, this looks like a brand new area. Okay, there's a toilet there. I actually didn't know that was a bathroom. I didn't notice that was a bathroom the first time I watched it, but I'm seeing now that that's a toilet with a bendy cut out there. Uh, more plunger action maybe. We'll find some bacon soup in that toilet bowl. I don't really know what's next to that toilet. Looks like perhaps it's a sink or a garbage can. We'd have to use an axe to cut through those wooden boards, so maybe we'll get the axe earlier in the next iteration of chapter one. We can also see one of those gearboxes on the wall in the middle, which is something we haven't seen at all until chapter three. There's also a speaker in the top left. Now that is pretty cool because we haven't had any audio cues at all in chapter one, except from the ink demon himself as he traveled through the vents to come and catch us. It also looks like there's a hat or a coat holder there next to the gearbox. We've got some posters that we've seen before, the work hard, work happy. They're really driving that point in that the workers were not happy. So, <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty much being brainwashed into working hard and working happy, probably so that Joey Drew could increase his fame, as he said in his audio recording, in which he insinuated that everyone else is kind of lazy and dreams come true with enough effort. Too bad he didn't put enough of that effort for himself, because we know in Henry's secret recording in chapter three, Joey took more than he gave. This speaker is very interesting to me. Oh, this is an interesting area, but first the speaker, this speaker here that we can see in the top left, who could be giving us audio cues? My guess would be Sammy Lawrence, and we've heard Sammy speaking over an intercom before. It would be interesting if we hear from Alice Angel in chapter one, it could be like a little thing where in the beginning they didn't want us to know Alice Angel was evil, but now that we know that Alice is evil, all the new Bendy and the Ink Machine fans might wonder who this sinister sounding female character is. Although honestly, Given the turn of events of the game so far, I do think Sammy Lawrence might speak to us over that intercom. Though it would be pretty cool to hear someone like Joey Drew speaking on the intercom as well, to kind of welcome us into the studio, or maybe to hear some sort of work training audio or something like that. 
I'd be interested to hear your thoughts as well, because something as small as a speaker could reveal so much about what's to come in chapter four. Let me know. Now we have this room. We'll find out a little bit more about this room later on, but it looks like it's on a separate floor of the studio, which is interesting because we've only had access to, I'll say two floors in chapter one in previous iterations, because we did start off on the main floor that we walk into, and we also go down to the lower floors to get to the music department. There's been this consistent theme of chains all over the studio, and I've been thinking that this would be for like some kind of leverage system to lift something up. My initial thoughts were for a homemade elevator system, since we do break the lift in chapter three. But this here we'll see later on in the video, and everybody probably is screaming at me right now because they know what I'm talking about. We'll see what this is actually for. Just a point of interest for you guys that I've noticed a lot when I've been covering theories, but I don't really know how to factor this into any one theory, but there's this consistent imagery of like a snake in the doorways. We can see one on the left and right here in the top left and the top right corner. I'm not quite sure what this means. Maybe the deep dark magic stuff has a Yu-Gi-Oh sort of feel and the history goes back into Egyptian magic or something. That's the kind of vibe I'm getting from this, maybe like Egyptian or Aztec, some sort of thing like that. If anybody's familiar with snake symbols in magic or just snake symbols in animation, it'd be interesting to get your feedback on those. As for the chains in the background, I can see a pulley over there with a power symbol on it. So it looks like we'll not only have to restore the power, but we'll have to pull this lever in order to lift something up with these chains, which we will see soon. I'm not quite sure if there's a door in the background there, but that is something to note. I don't know if those will actually open or not. Honestly, they kind of look like they're there to be decorative or to make things look more complex, but time will tell. New secrets. Okay, so the first thing that shows up is a toolbox with a gear and a power core, I'm assuming. Perhaps some sort of battery, judging from the lightning bolt symbol that we can see on that box. We're gonna have to pick that up and restore power with it somehow. We'll probably have to navigate to some sort of generator as well as find out where the lever is from the current iteration. Judging from the position and shape of this, it looks like the motorized system that controls the chains. We can see we need an A battery and a B battery. So be prepared to look for these batteries. The trailer does actually say new secrets when it's introducing these features. So I'm not quite sure what's happening there. Is this hinting towards a secret or something that we need to do? Like in the update to chapter two, where we had to release the pressure from the ink pipes in two separate areas instead of just one. From what I can see here, it looks like this is mandatory. It's interesting that there's a whole bunch of papers stuck up on the wall in the background. It kind of reminds me of the safe house where we saw that tune amalgamate slash Chimera creature on the wall. Sorry if I gave some of you some bad Full Metal Alchemist flashbacks by saying Chimera, but that's kind of what it reminds me of. Sort of hoping that's not true, but it would make for an interesting and heart-wrenching story. Also in this scene, we can see a lever, which seems to be attached to that motorized system I was talking about earlier, where we have to supply the batteries to. So yes, it does look like this controls the chain links that we can see in the background. Runs on more computers, hallelujah. Now this room is pretty interesting. We can see your standard bendy cutout. We can see a bunch of artist desks here with some sketches on them. Is that a butcher gang member? That sort of looks like, that kind of looks like Bali on that cell there in the bottom right. Basically what I'm seeing is a dark character with a white beard. So that's why I'm saying that. And gosh, that would be kind of a welcome addition because we didn't really get introduced to the Butcher Gang until chapter three. So everyone was sort of clueless as to who they actually were or what their purpose was. Of course, we then find out that they're just the random enemies that we come across instead of just the searchers in the studio. And they're in the form of Piper, Striker, and Fisher. The one in the very back looks a little bit like Bendy, I've got to admit but the one in the middle, that one's a little bit hard to discern. So what I'm gathering from this area is it's a place where artists use light tables to probably create filler images for the animations. I'm seeing a lot of rails here, which gives me the vibe that this is on a separate level. Although I'm not seeing stairs or anything, so perhaps these just divide out the stage to make things more interesting as we explore through the studio. I just skipped forward a few frames and it looks like there's another gearbox here. So perhaps we have to mess around with gears in chapter one in the remaster. I'm not sure why that would be other than to control the chains. I also didn't realize how dark this area is, which I suppose makes sense to make the light desks work better. In the background there, we can see one of the chapter three fan art contest winner posters, which is really cool. We're seeing a lot more of those spread out through the earlier stages. And I'm not quite sure what I'm seeing in between these two desks in the bottom right here, but it looks like a clamp or a, a, one of those TV screens. I'm not quite sure. Okay, so it doesn't look like the items we need to start up the ink machine have changed. 
And look who we have here. Boris the Wolf stuck on his operating table. These images have been updated big time. Okay, so this room now has half tiled walls. It kind of reminds me of a public bathroom. The message who's laughing now is now splattered across a whole bunch of those notes. So will we get to see more Chimera pictures in chapter four, I wonder? It kind of looks like it's priming us to see messages on these notes. So whenever we see the notes, we get a bit freaked out because we expect to see a message. But when we get to chapter three, we see the Chimera instead. And maybe in chapter four, we get to see different forms of the Chimera. This operating table is super refined. I can see a whole bunch of belts now, which wasn't a thing before. We can also see that dead Boris's snoot has been buffed. The floopy snoot has been buffed. Of course they show the wrench in the heart. I think that's everybody's favorite spawning place for the wrench, to be honest, in chapter one. Which means we'll also have to find these items again, which is not new news because we've seen the items, because we've seen the items on the pedestals in the break room. Interestingly, this looks like it has wheels on it now, but it's probably just a part of the table in the middle that can go up and down, kind of like a hospital bed. Gosh, this is gonna be so scary to see. I remember how freaked out when I saw dead Boris in the beta form, which was, scary enough, so the more details, the worse it's gonna get. I can also see that the ink pipe is thinner and longer here, which wasn't the case before, it was very short and thick, you could hardly even see it. Some people missed it when the game first came out. There's also a table in the background, which probably holds some scary stuff like scissors and knives or something, and the whole sensory experience that I'm getting from this area, with the lit up message of who's laughing now, the operating table, the table with utensils, the candle, it's kind of giving me Outlast vibes. Even the tiled wall now, it's really, really creepy, really gruesome. I love it. I've also noticed through these trailers, the dripping ink is becoming a bigger deal. So we will be seeing more dripping ink throughout the chapters, giving everything a more dystopian, broken down feel. I'm really down for this. This is so, so creepy. Holy moly. I do not want to look down that hallway. Just seeing it from a side view is scary enough. Coming this month. This month is April. Yes, so that is a picture of Bendy there. I wonder what he's doing. Here's that part of the studio that gets flooded. Wait, is it just Bendy bopping but, <laughs> but updated? Oh my gosh, I just got trolled. I think it is just Bendy bopping but updated. But still, that looks pretty cool. It's gonna be cute with the release of chapter four. So everything's dropping with chapter four. All right. Whoa, whoa, a little bit too fast. Hold on. This part here has to be part of the ink machine. Like, there's no way it's not part of the ink machine. Which means these chains have been lugging the ink machine around the entire studio. We're going to have to activate this lever to bring the ink machine up to what seems to be the highest floor of the studio. And remember, there was an area with stairs in chapter one that was blocked off in the previous versions. It looks like they're either going to like give us an ax to chop that down earlier, or allow us to just walk through there and get to this ink machine. So they might change the location of the ink machine, or there could be multiple ink machines because we did see one in chapter two. So this could be part of the secrets that was hinted at earlier in the trailer, or it just won't be a secret and we'll just learn about multiple ink machines from the beginning, which I suppose would make sense. Maybe the first machine couldn't handle all of the ink that was being pumped around the studio, so they needed more to prevent leakages and stuff like that. The thing that bothers me about this scene, and I'm not quite sure if it's just the angle of it, but I don't see an ink receptacle in the bottom left of the ink machine that we can see being lifted up here. That area kind of looks like where the ink receptacle or the ink container should be. So remember the ink machine actually has the machine part and a separate part that attaches to it that holds the ink that it pumps through the studio. And we know this from the blueprints from chapter two, chapter three. We can see one of those motorized power boxes in the bottom right there. So that's probably the same one that we need to plug those batteries into. It's a bit hard because of the angle of the camera to tell, but this got me really curious. Is this part of the ink machine? Cause it looks like half of an ink machine, honestly. Perhaps it isn't even an ink machine at all, but from what I see here, I see part of an ink machine, if anything. Hurry, download chapter one now to see the original. That's right. So everybody, that's the chapter one remaster. I'm going to go to the chapter two one now. Remember, both of these are going to be removed from Steam, so make sure you play at least chapter one if you're a Bendy fan before it gets updated. I'm pretty sure they're gonna keep chapter one free until the very end, which is super generous. Okay, it's time for chapter two, let's go. Chapter two. Something new to behold. Ooh, utility shaft nine, nothing looks much different so far. That's the cutout that Sammy sets up when he ignores us when we're wading through the ink. Cutting through into the music department, upgraded visuals. 
Okay, so this is just the shrine area. Not really noticing that much different. So this is where I noticed something really different. This area here looks much tighter and I really, really like it. The wall isn't so wide, so it won't take as long to get to the upstairs area where Norman Polk's projector is. So the travel time between that projector and the recording booth will be much less, which is something that I'm really liking. There's some music note symbols at the top there. I don't remember those being there. And we also get a gramophone in the bottom right. Now we've seen these gramophones added in the chapter four trailer and it looks like they're gonna give us more music. It would be pretty inefficient for them to just record their voices on a gramophone if they had audio tapes, but who knows? That could be one angle that the team is taking to change things up in the next game and the next iterations of chapter one and two. I personally think this is gonna be for more music, which will be really cool because I'd like to hear some of the other tunes that we've seen around the studio. And by that, I mean on the music sheets. We've got more droop and ink here. See the drooping ink? They're really driving home the drooping ink on the walls and just from the ceilings in the middle of the floor. Deeper secrets. So they're basically saying we're gonna go deeper into the studio, which is cool. What is this? See, when they say deeper, when they say something like this, when they say secrets, does that mean this area is gonna be a secret? Because this looks like an extension of that pump puzzle that we have to do when we access Sammy Lawrence's sanctuary. Now that's something I'm unsure about. By the way, this is pretty cool. Another puzzle where you activate the power, unleash the ink pressure. That'll be welcome. Now this was cool. This is really cool. You open the room next to Alice Angel's poster. Will this be where Susie Campbell is? I have a feeling that's Susie Campbell's room and I hope it is. Or maybe it's like a passageway to Susie Campbell's booth. I would love that. Oh my gosh, I'm just so excited to explore that room. I hope it's not like Wally Frank's broom closet or something. That would be such a letdown. Oh, what was that sound? Oh, it was just the door opening. All new areas. Oh yeah, that's what I'm waiting for. Or maybe it just leads down to this area. But to be honest, this area here that we're seeing, these areas, it kind of looks like, see these, these stairs? I feel like that's on the way up. So. The immediately opened up the infirmary area, but he kind of trolled us by putting an ink pipe there that we have to relieve pressure for. And he boarded up another area where he put a sign that said infirmary. So what I think is, see the staircase on the left that leads from that area. So this might be towards the infirmary. You can't see it clearly here, but we'll see another angle of this. There's another audio tape, by the way. And my gosh, they even have buckets of ink and sheet music and papers everywhere. Holy moly, this place is a mess. So we're gonna get more audio tapes. And we will see another angle of this area that will confirm that it's the infirmary, in my mind. This area here, I don't know, I'm just getting infirmary vibes, runs on more computers. All this ink, man, look at all this ink. They really want to drive home that the ink is taken over. Everything's getting flooded, it's just a disaster. That window looks a lot nicer, looks a bit more run down and dirty. Okay, this is just another angle of the music department poster. There's Tombstone Picnic there. I don't really see that much different here. Just Tombstone Picnic, Boris poster. Oh, it's Sammy's voice. Now I've been to stop the Sammy. Oh, there we go. Does that sign actually say infirmary? This sign here. <laughs> I, I really wanted to say infirmary because I really think this area is the infirmary. Hold on. There's also a sign to the right that I can't see because the axe is blocking it. Oh, that's blurry as well. I'm pretty sure this is the infirmary. It's got a plus sign on it for goodness. And at the top it says not sick, not paid. Wait, what does that mean? So is this an area you come to when you think you're sick and if you're not sick, you don't get paid for the hours that you come down here? I think that's what this is hinting towards. Besides, we can see all of these pluses. I'm pretty sure these signs say infirmary or pharmacy or something. So much drooping ink. Another bendy cutout, they're just everywhere. Sammy's is doing work. Okay, so there's a searcher coming after us. We know about that. Now this is cool. This looks like an extension of the infirmary hallways that we've seen earlier in this clip. At the end of this, we see a new message. And I'm pretty sure that says, sing for me or sing with me. And of course we've got chains coming down, latched onto something. I'm not quite sure what that is that it's latched onto. Is it part of an ink machine? That container that was missing from before? I don't know. What we can confirm is we can see a huge searcher. I don't think that's an ink worker, but it's wearing a hat, which is really weird. So it could be. Thomas Connor? Oh my gosh. It really looks like those giant searchers though that dropped the thick ink, which is a bit weird because we haven't seen those so early before. 
They were only introduced in chapter 3 though. Do we get to see Thomas Connor early? I hope it's not Wally Franks. It's probably just some big troll and a giant searcher. But new messages sing with me. So did Alice Angel actually write these messages? Or did a multitude of workers write the messages? And here's the final thing that hypes up Samuel Lawrence. Did you see that? It's like four frames of Samuel Lawrence moving his arm. But his animation, like it's so clear in these few frames that his animation is so much nicer and he seems more expressive. A lot of people have been telling me that he looks a bit jiggly and stiff, but in this, he looks beautiful. And a lot of people are praising the new animation for Sammy, so we're all gonna be looking forward to that. I'm gonna be looking forward to when he's standing upstairs and when he knocks us out. Heck, even when he's walking, he's gonna have more expression in his walk, which I'm gonna love. I'm sure everyone's gonna love it. Hurry, get chapter two now to play the original. Yes, so chapter two is also going to be updated, but I'm pretty sure you need to pay for chapter two. Just again, this Samuel Lawrence. This Samuel Lawrence teaser is so cool because if they updated his model, come on, there's gotta be a huge chance that he didn't really die at the end of chapter two. They gotta be changing that. Cause they updated Sammy's model, they made him more expressive. He can't be so short lived. There's gotta be something that happens in chapter four where we see Sammy again, where they get to make full use of this new model and his new animations. I'm really excited even if it's just in chapter two to see Samuel Lawrence and I'm sure many people are as well. Samuel Lawrence, is a character that so many people loved. You only got a minuscule amount of spotlight in the game so far. Now onto the chapter three remaster. Let's start watching chapter three. Looking for more? Heck yes, I'm looking for more. All right, we got the safe house, a lot of falling ink. There's our floopy snoot Boris. Boris looks a little bit skinny. I don't think he's changed that much to be honest, if he's changed at all. Visual refresh, lots of falling ink. This this should all be very familiar. What is that bendy cutout to the left? I don't remember seeing that bendy cutout before, that really big one to the left over here. My gosh. Mm, we're not really getting a very good angle on it though. It does look a bit different from the other ones. Maybe it's just a normal cutout. Other than that, everything here looks normal. I did notice a gear in the top right. I'm not really sure what significance that would have. Everything else seems pretty familiar. Previously hidden secrets. Okay, it says previously hidden secrets. What in the world is that on the right? So does this mean that there were secrets in chapter three that we didn't see before? I'm trying to see what this is. Previously hidden secrets. Okay, it's not a face. I think it's just a wall. Work hard, work happy. So that's a secret area. Oh, wait a second. <gasps> Oh my gosh, this is the test area. This is the test area from the chapter three announcement trailer. Oh my gosh, oh my goodness, hold on. This is it. So remember the test area, there was like a hallway with a puddle in the middle. So is there going to be that area where it's like double story and we saw the butcher gang running across the top? I'd be interested to see that. Holy cow, is that a bendy statue in the back? It's kind of hard to see. Oh great, the pipe blocks it. We've got more work hard, work happy signs back there. I really think this looks like the test area, that hallway that Henry ran through when he was running away from Bendy. And at the end of it, there was a little miracle station, if I recall correctly. Again, we see a lot of ink falling down. Really dilapidated studio. Runs on more computers. Got a hallway. This is Alice Angel's quarters. It looks a bit smokier. Free update. And Angel Path. We've got level. I can't remember if that was level K, and this is Bendy walking smugly across the screen here. Now I know Bendy's model was updated in this. I already tweeted and, and chatted on Facebook and stuff about this. This is pretty, pretty darn hype. His hand looks so gigantic, like the gloved hand. Oh my gosh, what the heck is going on here? And his body's like skinnier or something. This looks like the area where there are heaps of tables and the cameras and that one Boris poster that has tea time with the Meatly. Coming this month, got ourselves level nine here. Nothing much looked different there. We've got the merch area. There's a bendy cutout, we know about that one. With the release of chapter four. Wait, what was Alice saying there? Okay, you've got a date with an angel, nothing too different. Just follow, holy, okay, yup. The Bendy, oh my gosh. Bendy looks so creepy, hold on. Just follow the screams. 
You can. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. This, this is the test area. Oh my gosh. This is the test area, guys. They got rid of the, they got rid of the V belt on the left. And there's the message to the right, the creator lied to us. I'm not sure if it said that in the trailer, but I remember this gearbox and like this winding corridor. So at the end of this corridor, if you turn right and then you go instantly left and you keep going straight, it should be where the little miracle station ends. There's Alice Angel. Now see, because we see this, this little scene with Alice and Piper attached to that electrocution table or whatever it is. It makes me wonder if they updated the sounds and visuals of Piper being electrocuted. Oh yes, I'm going to talk about Bendy. Just want to see what this is first. So it looks like an area where Bendy can chase you. I'm not really familiar with this area. It kind of looks like one of the corridors that joins uh, Heavenly Toys to level K, I think it is. But it looks so much wider, like there's so much space in comparison to before. Maybe they did that to stop Bendy from glitching out and walking into the wall over and over and, and the ink pipes as well. That's something that was a, a common problem, at least with me. Bendy would just bug out and walk into a wall and you'd have no idea where the heck he is until you walked into him. You got him angry and then he'd come and chase you and kill you. Sometimes you'd be able to have enough distance to get away from him, but not always. Okay, this, this is exciting. I know it's like five frames of Bendy running, but holy moly. Are we able to walk backwards really fast or what? Did they, did they mod the game so that they could record this? This is really cool, because we're literally like walking just as fast as Bendy's running. Hold on. Can you imagine running backwards from Bendy? That would be freaky. Oh my gosh, it's so fluid. And it's confirmed. Wait, hold on. You can see. So Bendy's right hand doesn't have a glove and his left hand does have a glove. See, this is something that I noticed in the chapter three. I don't know if the people who were on my live stream for chapter three remember me saying this, but I remember explicitly saying Bendy has gone Michael Jackson on us because he's wearing one glove. So what's up with that? Bendy seems to have more of an hourglass figure here. I wonder if, and this is only if the ink worker theory is true, if Bendy is actually inhabited by a female ink worker, because he's got a significant hourglass figure here. Is it Allison versus Alice Angel, I wonder? Like, look at that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> his model's been updated to be more aerodynamic, so he's faster. I love how he inches forward more when he chases after you. I wonder what his angry stance looks like now. It feels like there's just so much detail in his running animation, and that ink falling across his face. He's got a huge smile. His head actually reminds me a bit of the beta days. I don't know if many prodigies remember the beta days, what Bendy looked like, but his face was nearly entirely covered with ink. You can't even see his eyes now. Before we were able to see eyes, but now we can't. It seems like his face is rounder, It's he's got a much bigger smile. It kind of reminds me of Pennywise, to be honest, if you just cut out the head. Just the expression that he's making, the gigantic smile, the twisted appearance of the ink dripping across his face, really tying in with the other elements of the studio being dilapidated and ink falling all over the place. Oh, this is so cool. I cannot wait to see Bendy in action. And this is only in chapter three. What's he gonna look like in chapters one, two, and four? Especially four, because we're gonna see him in situations that we've never seen him in before. I'm really hoping that we get to see a cutscene or something with Bendy, or we're in a situation like when we face against Alice Angel or Sammy Lawrence, where they're in front of us and we can't control ourselves. Maybe if we're not necessarily in a little miracle station, but if we're hiding somewhere and we're seeing Bendy doing something creepy like walking across or fighting with an ink worker and that reminds me because Sammy Lawrence might be coming back in chapter 4 I'd love to see an interaction between Sammy and Bendy or at least between Sammy and Alice but that's just me gushing over their updates honestly I really hope Bendy plays a bigger role in the next chapter that'll be cool hurry get chapter 3 now to play the original one last time I love how the text shakes there it's giving you a sense of urgency. You gotta do it because they're gonna delete it. All chapter three is going to be history and I cannot wait to see what the new one has in store for us. What we can see in this trailer looks really awesome so far. I cannot wait to see chapter four, honestly, as well as all of the changes to the previous chapters. I'd be interested to know if we see more of the Chimera slash Toon Amalgamate character that we've been seeing on the walls of the studio in a 3D form. Now that would be cool. Is it really Joey Drew's creation? Tap this video to find out, or check out these videos which were picked just for you. If you're new, remember to subscribe and tap that bell for more Bendy and horror game theories that actually make sense. And Prodigies, I hope these videos help to expand on how you think. See ya!